Thank you for inviting me here today. It's been a very interesting uh, meeting so far. There's lots of talks that are relevant to the work that we're doing here in, Bir uh, in Birmingham. And we've also got a number of colleagues from UCL who are working on this project. So what I'll start off by doing is um, just providing the title of a talk, which is um, a city description framework to elucidate urban challenges. Um, I'm focusing on the energy flows of Birmingham. Now, for this project, uh, there's a number of researchers based at Birmingham. Uh, there's myself and Joanne Leach, who um, helped develop the city analysis framework, along with Chris Bouch. And I've also got two colleagues, Dexter Hunt and Calvin Rose, who's a PhD student, and they're looking at the water, for water energy nexus for cities. And the whole project is led by Professor Chris Rogers, who is our um, principal investigator. And we're all based in the civil engineering department at um, Birmingham. Now, talk today, I'm going to look at the, give an overview of the Livable Cities program, and then give a very brief overview of the city analysis which um, Joanne and Chris Bouch have been working on. Um, a bit more detail about energy and material flows, which uh, we've just been talking about. Um, then some bit more detail on Birmingham energy flows and the CO2 emissions from Birmingham City. And then I'll finish off with further work planned. Now, this is a whole Liverpool Cities team. I've given you an overview of the civil engineers at Birmingham. We've also got some colleagues in geography. Um, the principal investigator is John Sadler. And they're looking at the um, sort of ecological aspects of city life. And one of my colleagues, um, James Hunt, Spotlight team, he's interested in bat movements. That's what links into some of the earlier speakers on the ecological side. Um, we've also got colleagues at Lancaster University and they're looking at the social well-being aspects of city life and they're carrying out a number of studies within the city um, focusing on different um, areas of the city and people's aspirations for what they'd like the city to look like in the future and their current living conditions. And we've also got colleagues down in Southampton and they're based in engineering and they're looking at the built environment and the energy use within buildings, and they're also going to do some case studies um, up in Birmingham. And finally, but by no means least, we've got the UCL colleagues. Um, there's Professor Nick Tyler and his team <coughs> are looking at future visioning of cities, and also um, Brian Collins, um, he's looking at uh, policy and governance and how that impacts on the operation of cities. Now, this is quite a complex diagram. I'll try and uh, explain it in a fairly straightforward manner, hopefully. Um, we're putting together a city description framework. And this consists of two parts, essentially. We have... Uh, oops, sorry. I'll just put... Let's give it a pointer. <laughs> Basically, at the top, we have the um, exogenous and endogenous influences, and at the bottom, capability and capacity. So those are the external factors that influence um, the city. But within that, we've got the, what we call the city analysis methodology. And we start off at the apex of title of the triangle with a vision. This is where the city wants to be, sort of an aspirational uh, statement. Um, it's not directly manageable, so... A lot of cities have these vision statements, and um, in the case of our project, we're hoping to achieve a vision of a, a low-carbon city, which is um, resource secure and maximises well-being. And part of the low-carbon um, city initiative is linked to the um, UK objective of achieving 80% reduction in carbon by, CO2, by um, 2050, which is also a name of Birmingham City. So that's a vision statement. And then we also have... Beneath that, um, the aims, which are the high-level activities that we require to achieve the vision. Again, they're aspirational and not directly measurable. And then beneath that, the objectives that are going to satisfy the aims. And it includes defined end states and are measurable. And then underneath that, we've got feedbacks between strategies and policies that will help us to achieve the objectives. And within that, we've got a route map. And underneath... We've got the processes and actions, which are day-to-day -day activities of a city, which includes measures of performance. And it's in this sort of section that uh, I've been working on 
looking at the energy flows and material flows of the city of Birmingham. So some details of these flows. Um, we've got the energy flows in and out of the city, which include transport. And I've also been looking at um, gas and electricity. Um, the energy use is actually within city boundaries. We've also looked at CO2 emissions as well as heat emissions. And also considering flows of waste, water and food. Now, initially, I've just been looking at those flows in isolation just to get a feel for the figures. But the aim is to link all the different flows together because, obviously, um, things like energy and water are linked together. You need energy to pump water around the system. And also, there's, there's links with food and transportation, which, again, impacts on fuel use. And, again, use of energy and CO2 emissions. So all these are linked together. Now, this chart um, is quite complex, but basically, I want to give you a feel for what actually happens within the UK. Um, the main inputs that are coming into the UK, we've got about 300 megatons of oil equivalent coming into the country. And of that, about half is actually consumed. So we've got about half of that energy is actually lost in processing before it gets to the end user. Um, the main flows here, the purple uh, flow is gas. The black flow is coal that goes into power stations. And then we've got some electricity, which is sort of light pink colour. And then the, the main electricity that's output from the power stations is dark pink. And then down at the bottom, we've got petroleum products. And the bulk of that, the sort of turquoise green colour is um, transport. And then once we come through the gas loop, we can see at the end, um, it comes down to the bottom, which is actually domestic usage. And that is essentially domestic gas heating, which is quite a significant amount. And that's of the order of about 50 megatons of oil equivalent. Uh, there's also industry down there. Industry is the next one um, below domestic. And then we've also got um, transportation, which is the main user of um, petroleum products. So it's just to give you a feel of how things get converted. This um, grey um, arrow coming down, that's transmission losses. So there's an awful lot of losses from the power stations, um, which, again, impacts on the amount of energy usage. Now, just a bit of background to Birmingham, why we're studying it. Um, apart from being based there, it's the second largest city after London. It's a post-industrial city with a population of just over a million. And it covers in an area of 268 kilometres squared with a density of about 4,000 people a kilometre and employs 460,300 people. It's Europe's youngest city and 22.8% um, of this population are under 16, which is quite unusual for the UK. It's ethnically diverse, and black and minority ethnic groups account for about 42% of the population. Another thing of interest is it's at the centre of the UK's road and rail network, so we're quite interested in the developments with um, High Speed 2 and how that's going to impact on the city if it uh, ever gets off the ground. Right, just a breakdown of how we um, consume energy in Birmingham. Um, there's about 1.66 megatons of um, oil equivalent which is used by the city as a whole, and that's about 1% of the whole UK's consumption. And of that, it's sort of divided fairly equally between domestic and industrial, slightly more for domestic, and then the rest goes into transport. Again, this is in megatons of oil equivalent. Um, and then the CO2 emissions, uh, this diagram sort of split into two parts. The inner part of the donut is, again, the, the split between commercial, domestic, and transport. And um, the main CO2 emissions for commercial is from electrical usage. And then on the domestic sector, again, the gas usage comes out slightly more than electricity. And then again, the transport sector is dominated by uh, petroleum. And we've got various other sectors as well. So a total, more or less, of about 6,000 kilotons of CO2 emitted for 2011. So future work on the project, we will finalise a, a paper about this work. Uh, we'd like to do more investigation about embedded carbon and raw materials. Uh, this will link into um, the waste flow, essentially. Uh, we we're focusing on the, the links between the main ones of water, waste, food, and energy. And we want to generate performance parameters which will inform the city analysis methodology. And then we're going to apply the 
property analysis methodology to Lancaster and Southampton. So the ultimate aim of the project is to be able to develop a methodology based on what happens in Birmingham and then apply it to Lancaster and Southampton and then develop it further if it seems to work in a reasonable manner and then possibly apply it to a city overseas. And that's our website for anybody who wants to look at that. Thank you for listening. Are there any uh, questions? There's one question over there. Hello there. How are you actually aggregating the data for this? Because it looks like you've got to have potentially an enormous amount of data. Yes, there, there will be. <laughs> oh, we're going to use several different approaches. Um, we're going to have a sort of GIS um, sort of system whereby we'll be developing different layers which we can build up. So um, we've got various different um, databases of the city, just sort of um, the, the wards of the city, the output areas, and then gradually on top of those basic areas we'll build up a picture of what happens within the city in terms of uh, different social economic groupings, population in different areas, and then build on top of that the energy usage within different parts of the city based on a variety of data sets. We have got data on things like public buildings, but the um, commercial sector will be more challenging. But there are different maps across the UK that have been developed that show um, energy consumption and heat emissions as well, which can be linked to energy usage. So you can sort of superimpose different layers at the top of each other. So it'd be sort of a visual representation. But it's still ongoing work and it is very challenging <laughs> with lots of different disciplines involved. Okay, well, perhaps we'll... Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.